I'm Joost Rosen from RadioGardenSense.com. I'm going to tell you or explain to you a little bit about the pH. It's very important to know the pH factor of your uh, soil in order to grow the right plants because if the pH is wrong, say for instance the pH is very really low, then the uh, plants that uh, grow at very low pH a lot of times have trouble uh, getting certain nutrients and in that case most likely a rhododendron cannot get to the uh, phosphate uh, in your soil. So what we do is we're going to look for a pH uh, test kit. You can buy a liquid type of test kit that requires a tube and then you put a little bit of soil in there and you add some water and then you shake it and then you should, you're, you're supposed to uh, match the color but most of the time what happens it's so brown and muddy looking and you have a hard time really figuring out what color it is so I, I'm not too in favor of these types of test kits I mean they're inexpensive but they're difficult to work with I'd rather have you buy an electronic pH test uh, meter that may cost you about 20 bucks. It, it uh, looks like this after you take it out of the package. The only thing you do is you have to uh, you have to put it in water when you buy it new for about say about five minutes. Then you wipe the prong with a paper towel, and after that it's charged because if it's been in that package, it's, you know it's completely dead. So what we're going to charge it first in that water. The instructions should be on the packet on that packet. So what we're going to do is now charge, we assume, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the uh, probe in the pot, and I see it's about six and a half, that's fine for that uh, boxwood, so we have a nice looking plant, here's a rose, I'm going to check, in general it takes about 20 seconds to uh, read, but it's almost six three quarters, so that's fine over here too, a blueberry, we should expect a little lower pH here, it's about uh, six, so that's just at the, at the uh, borderline. The uh, preferred pH for the blueberry is about from about five to six. Then we go to the rhododendron here. We're going to check it again, and the pH drops all the way down to about four and a half, and that's kind of low for a rhododendron. It's at the ball at the bottom of the chart. The plant doesn't look all that happy. You know, you see kind of dead spots here. A little fat off to try to come on here, so we need to do something with this. Here is a camellia. I'm going to check that again. The camellia is supposed to be about from about five to six. It's uh, a little over six. Still looks pretty good. I guess you know we can tolerate that. And if you have a lawn, of course you need to check the lawn too. The pH of your tall fescue. So the people that grow grass in our broadcast area. The uh, average uh, pH will be about, about six to seven because we're going to grow tall fescue. In order to change the uh, pH, the uh, pH meters when you uh, buy them, they have a booklet in there. They'll tell you for about 400 species and lawns, you know what the pH should be, and then you can just check it. And if you have to raise the pH, you can use lime. If you have to lower the pH. You can use iron sulfate, but you can follow those instructions that come with those pH testers. So it's very, very important to know your pH of your plants, of your vegetable garden, and of your lawn. So what we do before we even start thinking about fertilizing the lawn, we're going to check the pH, and then after that we decide what to use. And of course after that, a week or two later, we're going to use the turf trust. We're not going to apply iron sulfate and turf trust at the same time, or lime and turf trust at the same time. We do that at separate applications. When you check the pH, make sure that your lawn is moist because these devices work best when there's some moisture in the ground. And I'm Jos Rosen from RadioGardenSense.com.